Today, we take on a really tough topic, suicide. September is National Suicide Prevention Month, and over the past few years, we've seen a rise in the number of black boys committing suicide. Plus, the pandemic is adding to the risk as young people deal with isolation and depression and other factors. That's why the nonprofit called Encourage Me, I'm Young started a campaign called Smash Suicide. I talked with the group's founder, Calvin Mann, along with supporter Stacey Robinson, who lost her teenage brother to suicide. So Calvin, I want to start with you and have you just talk about uh, Encourage Me, I'm Young and talk about this dangerous trend that we have seen on the rise uh, with black youth and black male youth in particular, uh, this spike in, uh, in suicides and suicide attempts. Well, I mean, when we, when we get into it, encourage me, I'm young. We, we have been mentoring and doing the things that we need to do to make our young men better, right? So we've been teaching young men to lead, to be productive members of society. And we were re awarded Respect Day, and it was 2017 when we discovered that young boys, 5 to 12, were number one, mm -hmm. right? The more we looked into um, the suicide modality and the, the information, so the various... Uh, suicide uh, events, you know, the whole nine, the more we looked at it, we realized that what we were doing was effective. Hmm. So um, in that process, I started talking more, just like you and I had the conversation. It's like we had to do something about it. So in launching the children's book, Adventures of Oba and Luther, that gave us a face to apply to um, that age group. Mm -hmm. Right, which allows us to speak to the parent to tell them um, our method. Right, how can we help? Um, Stacy and I have always, you know, uh, been working together the last couple of years, been talking the whole nine, but we discovered along the way as we kept going that it wasn't going away. So my voice got louder. Eventually, I flipped over the whole website. So our whole website is now uh, got the, you know, number to call in case of suicide. We do a lot of referrals already. But what was astounding was the the 2000, the study from 1998 to 2018, over 28,000 males, black males had committed suicide. Mm -hmm. That was astounding, right? Along with, you know, the 2016 and the different information. And, and in our research, we noticed that there were a number of people in this area that was not informed. Like this was not even on their radar. Yeah. And um, for us, it was an opportunity to say, hey, we're already working in prevention. Let's do more. You yeah. know what I mean? So, um, you know, we started talking. I was in a cohort and we started building this committee. And one thing led to another. Got Stacy on the phone. She told me her story. Hmm. Yeah. Stacy, this is such a personal issue for many of us, it is a very, very personal issue uh, for you. Um, talk about what happened with your brother. So my brother um, was 18. He was a senior in high school um, in 1999, actually. And um, my brother, um, uh, long story short, took his life. Um, it kind of was a shock to my entire family. I have all brothers. I have three brothers. Um, once I lost two brothers in 99, uh, one to murder and one to suicide. And it was very devastating that to know that my brother was going through things that I was not aware of. And um, like Calvin, the one thing we do have is the passion of making sure that our kids are okay. Um, after my brother took his life, I discovered that there were, he left signs that he was going through. Because I was not in his household at the time, I didn't see all of them, but they came through later. My mom told me that he wasn't um, bathing himself like he normally would. He wouldn't get out of his room. Um, he was giving away important things to his friends. Um, he was having issues at school. All those were flags. Had I known, I would have interceded. And Calvin, um, the, what Calvin is doing, my mom and I did. We started a, a, a nonprofit right after my brother passed 
to talk about it. And so we were going into the Detroit public schools. This was happened in the Detroit public school. Mm. The schools didn't want us in. The churches didn't want us in. Nobody wanted to hear about it. And so that's been many years ago. And Calvin has resurrected this same program. It doesn't stop. Um, it's actually on the rise now, in my opinion, because I work at human services as well. With this pandemic, it's created a major um, burden on our children. Yeah. They don't have the outlets. And for boys, they're physical. They like to play football and basketball and be engaged with their friends. And now they're confined to their homes. And we as parents and we as a village need to find opportunities for those t- kids to be able to still get the things they need, but also look at the signs. Because one of the things I always say is, When you make that decision, you can't take it back. And if a child has hope to understand, even us as adults, we have situations, we have storms. We know there is something on the other side. They can't envision that. So it is our job as a village to be able to set up our our kids to understand that sometimes you're going to have disappointments, but that's not the end all. Sometimes it's a blessing. You don't know it. They're like, yeah, yeah, but you have to kind of tell your story, be transparent. So my mission, um, um, uh, Calvin does a lot of major um, programs. I love all of his programs. Um, I love children. He loves children. But this one was very personal for me. Yeah. And so it's kind of like, all right, it's time to hit the pavement again. Because I also work with that age group, yeah. boys and girls, and I see it. I see it all the time. Yeah. Uh, uh, Calvin, I wonder if you can share with viewers um, – you know the, the things that people ought to be on the on the lookout for, as Stacy said, as as you said, people don't see this coming. They don't see this coming uh, with young people around them. What are the what are the signs that people ought to be on the lookout for? Well, you know, a lot of times we with boys, we give them things, and you know, from video games and things like that, where they are quiet. But um, the 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 piece that I would say is if you have a four, five, six, seven, eight year old, right, you must engage them. Mm-hmm. Right? This is engaging them, getting them to talk, making sure that you're getting some more information, ask deeper questions because these kids are they're very very smart. Then you empower them, right? You're making sure that what they want to be is in front of them. Give them the best visuals that you can. And then we apply encouragement. It's, it's really that simple in prevention. But a lot of times we wait till it's too late and then it's intervention. Maybe if we were doing these bridges and building the kids this way early on, maybe middle school, they don't do it. Maybe high school, ninth grade, they don't do it. Maybe we cut into that. Mm-hmm. And that is our hope. Yeah, Stacy, we've only got about a minute left, but I, I want to quickly get you to talk about the, the key role that people like you and your family have to play in this, uh, given your experience. Yes, well, I work, first of all, I work at a fabulous organization. I love corporate America after 30 years because I knew this was my purpose. Mm-hmm. And so I work at Franklin Wright Settlements, Inc. They've been around here for 140 years. Mm-hmm. And so we deal with those children. And I've actually reached out to Calvin a few times. In the summertime, I can kind of get my hands on the kids. I can identify it. And so just providing those resources. But what I say as a village, when I say village, that means all of us, uh, whatever our profession is, is to recognize. I just sent a kid to Kelvin yesterday because he had this outlet, is when you see something, do something, be the voice. I am not a social worker, but my amazing supervisor is, um, it's Mark, she is a counselor. So when I see those things, I bring her in. She's a social worker, she can talk to that child. But even you, myself, whatever, if I see it, I at least have a conversation, make a connection, make it a safe space to get them help. Because I'm not the person that's in that field to provide the actual um, therapy, but I can recognize it by the symptoms. So be aware of anybody that's pulling away. Um, they're, they're not eating, they're not bathing, they don't want to play with their friends at that age. Um, be aware of bullying. I do not encourage, and I did not do it for my children. Um, social media has had a major impact on this because they're now being bullied through social media. And so um, I would just say, just be that listening ear and be that caring person. And if you don't know how to connect, then you reach out to Calvin at emmyworld.com and we will find the resources for those children.